48 hour art check, round 89, where we can say whatever we want. Yeah, three countries. <laughs> oh, I left that up. Dang it. <laughs> I forgot the 88 miles an hour thing. Okay, so we'll take that down. Did I, I leave it up here it. as well? Wait, wait, wait. Do, can you, do you still have the shortcut to make it flip out again? We yeah, it'll, it can, I can, it I can flip time. it on. Yeah. Yeah. That's a leftover from episode 88, everyone. You guys should check out episode 88. It's amazing. So we are, we are, we are either leveling up or have hit rock bottom. One of the two. <laughs> we started doing but, skits. <laughs> but I will tell you, it's pretty amazing. I and mean, Corey has been backwards in time by like almost a year. It's yeah. it's nuts. It's it's like, you know, the technology that the weatherman has. We've harnessed that. Exactly. All right. So. Um, okay. Tight tight fifteen, right? Yes. All right. Yes. Let's try it. Uh, so let's see. I did uh, a video on how I animated an explosion and then I finished uh, that and this is what it looks like. So, and I'm just gonna kinda, so there's the explosion. And I was like really nervous about that explosion because um, I didn't exactly know how it would turn out. Um, but I'm like pleasantly surprised. All those different layers that I had worked pretty well, so. So that's what I've been working on for the last couple of weeks, and now it's done, except for the music. Oh my goodness. Um, hmm. I don't know if you can see me. My computer looks like it froze. Oh, there we go. Okay. That can... does look amazing, though. Um, I am, like, blown away by that. You texted that to me while I was at work today, and I was like, I was feeling good about this little After Effects thing and building at my job. <laughs> And then I saw that and was like, I actually showed it to a couple of coworkers and was like, this is my friend. He's amazing. <laughs> like, I was like, if you think this is cool, these little like, where I'm just putting two points of movement, check this out. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. Well, That's thanks. really impressive. And the explosion looks really good. And it's just like you said, because it, it did look a little um, like much on right. the layers, like when it was just flat, but with the blurs and the different effects, it's like, it just, it works. Really yeah. Beautifully. And that's where it's really hard to explain to people what's in your brain. Cause like, yeah. I knew it looked bad and I would show people and they'd be like, yeah, you know, they get that like fake, I like this present face on and they're like, yeah. And I'm like, no, no, no. I know it looks bad, but it'll look good when I make it move. And so yeah then, i have uh -huh. a suspicion of that because the <laughs> sequence and the colors were good so it's like right. I, you know i think as long as you got that it's like it's like having a good base to work from but it's really nice man yeah uh, congrats because that looks that looks rad yeah so how about you what did you uh what'd you get done um i finished my rough pencils and these are super rough but i actually thought that it'd be better to be a little looser on this, on this round because uh, that way I'm not like doing two rounds of tight pencils. Yeah. Um, and so I'm going to go over it and well, we'll get into that with plans, but I'm feeling pretty good. Um, I feel like I'm prepped. I've got a good page to hopefully, hopefully I can ink it over, over the break. So. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It does look good. And I don't know, man, like you're, you're, you're acting on the, on the posing and blocking and stuff. It's just like, without even reading it, you can like feel what's going on. So, which is cool. So I like that. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So challenges, uh, I'm just going to play this again. <laughs> just kidding. The main challenge is I, I went, I went live on this and, uh, I was a little nervous because, I didn't know how I was going to do it. I had kind of an idea of what I thought might work. And uh, and I did that live. And so if you want to watch, it took me about 40 minutes, I think, to get everything that's done. That's awesome. So, yeah. And uh, I mean, as far as like actual challenges, because that's just whatever. But uh, I'm moving offices. And so it's like the end of the semester. I'm grading and I'm having to walk in between two different buildings. And I carried like, I don't know, 50 pounds of books in a hiking backpack through the snow to my office this morning from my studio. 
and stuff just because I don't have a car. So, <laughs> so I'm like, I'm moving, which is just, it's, and like, I can't, I'm not allowed to touch my computer, like move it, even though I know how to do it correctly. Uh, there's like people on campus that do it. And so my computer and phone are in one office and everything else I own is in the other office and they're not next to each other. So it's just been after hours, a little bit later than normal and that stuff like that. End of the semester stuff plus moving. Yeah. But I have a window that faces outdoors, which is the first time in like 13 years that I've had an exterior window in my office. So I'm really excited about that. That's really nice. That actually yeah. makes a, a huge difference. Um, oh, Abe in the chat said uh, your animation looks cool. So, oh, thanks, man. Hi, appreciate Abe. that. Thanks for joining us, man. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's crazy. It's funny because like I'm I I had this like weird reaction when you're like I don't have a car because I was like because uh. I'm in California. Right. <laughs> it's like that's <laughs> that's like that would be like not being able to exist. Yeah. Um, yeah. In, in, and then I was like, oh, that's right. There's places where you could, like, not have a car and I've, get I've and clocked. Get a I've clocked it. I am 0.6 miles from my door to my office door. That's unbelievably so, awesome. And I'm not Even considered... If LA, you'd still need a car. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Somehow that's six miles. I mean, we have so a... That's really amazing. We have a family car. And I have a motorcycle, but there's, yeah, yeah. there's snow on the ground. So, yeah. No, that makes perfect sense. I just like, it was just funny. I, I just realized my one of my own inherent biases of just <laughs> right. being, you know, in California near LA where it's like, you, you had, but you have to, like, how do you not? How can you be an adult? <laughs> how do you exist? <laughs> um, but that's, yeah. Um, uh, anyhow. Okay, cool. Uh, um, my challenges were um just like so yesterday i was pretty sick and i ended up staying home and it worked out actually to my benefit because i i had to do an animation for my job and i wouldn't have been able to get as much as i got done because it that is that process where you gotta have like a nice zone of time uninterrupted yeah because a lot of what takes forever is just importing stuff like right. takes too long and so um, a lot of it's just tedious, like pre setup, and then the fun parts, like making everything move. But all the pre planning and the little components and stuff, that takes like a lot of focus and time. So, and if you um, get interrupted during that time, yeah, that's like a non starter because you're like, okay, I've got to remember that I just did these three keyframes on yeah. those two layers. And so the next yeah. 35 layers need to be in sync with that. And so if you like stop and then come back to it, it's not like you can look at a page and be like, all right, where's the ink and where are the pencils? There. And you can just jump in. You're like, oh, here's this massive numbers and keyframes that I can't remember what I was doing. Yeah. Yeah. So that so that was a big challenge. And then um, right now I'm just, man, I am feeling like, it, it, I, I think this used to happen to me when I taught and it, and it definitely happens to me every year when I actually do take a vacation where the second I, I have that burden off my back of deadlines and stuff like that, um, I just feel beat up and exhausted. And it's like my body's telling me all the work I've been doing all year. And so it's like today, I just, I am, uh, it was a struggle just to even make it to the 48 hour, hour art check just just because of sheer exhaustion, which is weird. I, I don't usually feel it to that level, but just today, like, um, I was like, I'm so just going to sleep and sleep like, like forever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I'm so excited about having time off. So it's like, it's a challenge, but it's like a, a good challenge. I'm, I'm glad least, to have that challenge. At least you got sick now rather than what used to happen to me where I would work and work and work and work. And then day one of the vacation, I'd be, my body would be like, oh, you get to relax now? The flu. <laughs> it's yeah. Like, oh, great. Thank and you. I think a lot of, I, I think why that even happens though is because it's like you're so just in kind of survival mode right that like you, you shut it off for a day and it's like whoa like i've been i've been putting all this off <laughs> like um so so i don't know i'm it's a good problem to have though because like coming from freelance where i i never took vacations i never had paid days off if i had a day off it was unpaid you know mm -hmm. um 
that that's something I really appreciate to this day is like if I'm if I'm literally having paid time off that's that's a good boat to be in <laughs> you know yeah yeah um, so plans for me oh I don't know what is it Friday <laughs> I finished the thing I was working on I haven't thought yes. about plans at all probably my plans are I need to shift from being crazy professor guy to be a dad husband who needs to go Christmas shopping or draw some things. My daughter asked me this morning, dad, for Christmas, would you draw me a picture? And so I'll probably, I'll probably spend the weekend making her something. She wants me to draw her as a Harry Potter character. So Dude, that'd be um, kind of fun. Yeah. Cause flat. Yeah, well, my wife was like, hey, because she drew her sister. She's like, hey, like, my sister and I really like Winnie the Pooh, and so could you, like, do an illustration, like, in the Winnie the Pooh style? And I am not good at switching styles, so that took way too long. That was something else I did this week, is I did two or three versions of that, um, because she didn't like the first couple. Man, I tell you what, uh, family as clients, it's so hard, especially if it's your wife, because, like, I want to please my wife probably more than anyone else I know on the planet. And so when I show her something that she wanted me to draw for her and she's like, yeah, that's good. I'm like, okay, it sucks. I'm going to throw it away and start over. (laughs) (laughs) But we finally got that printed. And then Scarlett saw that and was like, will you draw me a picture for Christmas? So that's, those are probably my plans. That's, those are good plans. I haven't thought of them. Those are clients. Those are the best plans. Um, Yeah. It's funny. um, My wife and I don't do art for each other really much at all because I think we're just, we do art so much that like, yeah, we can both draw. So it's like, um, I don't know. It's weird. We don't really make art for each other. I guess it'd be like if we were both, uh, construction workers or something it's not like we get home right. and be like let's build walls together <laughs> you know yeah. um but uh but it is fascinating and, and it, it it is it's it's a really good gift it's actually my wife in the background is working on some paintings and stuff for uh for family so, yeah that's um, awesome for Christmas. so yeah um so what are your plans let's get into plans um I, Christmas is a big plan. I sincerely think that that will probably be. I, I'm still gonna try to do something comics related that day, but I I suspect that might be one of the few days of the year where I just I'm not gonna do a lot, if anything. <laughs> um, and might, I think that's okay. <laughs> that might be where you and I differ because. I am definitely going to play video games and read comic books and eat lots of food and probably not be productive at all for a week. Yep. <laughs> I think that sounds beautiful. Like just a non-productive. I don't know, but I do want to do some play too, like some creative play. So I think yeah. I might do like um, just mess around in, in After Effects a little more because I'm really starting to love it. Um I definitely want to make some headway on my comic, and I gotta write that script. That's a that's actually another part of my plans. I should have mentioned the script for the Hundred Days of Comics anthology that you're in as well, and then Scott, who's on here on Mondays, this is going to be I think doing the cover, which is kind of exciting. Oh, that's cool. Um, and and then he's doing a story for it too, but I still haven't come up with my story. I haven't really had a for me with writing. Um, I I really need like a good you know at least hour just of quiet and my own little bubble Mm -hmm. um and i just haven't really had that so i've been waiting for a break for that too because i'm like i know i'll have like an hour where i can probably like sit down and and really work out the plot and do some research because i want it to be and i know kind of what i want it to be i'm not sure which angle i'm going to take i'm either going to do something that is slightly autobiographical and then ties in my mythology to it mm-hmm. or um because that that is kind of my wheelhouse but i think it might be fun to do something straight up fiction that's honoring some like you know myths that i like but there's there's a couple that i i'm torn about i'm torn about going with like new era stuff and doing like some bigfoot stuff or if i'm gonna do like you know some greek mythology 
or maybe like I don't know. There, there's a million routes to go, and so I got to really pin it down and pick pick something and run with it. So yeah, that's 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 a goal. That was way too long for my goals. How about yours? <laughs> How, what are your goals? Oh, uh, that's it. I was just I talked about drawing something for Scar. So sweet. Yeah, oh, and then I, I do need to get the I do need to get the script. I've got. Yeah, I do this all the time. I have a like a three hundred page epic story in my mind, and I have four pages to tell it in. So um, anyway, I've got to figure out how I'm going to do that. So, but very, you've done your pitch, which is good. So you're you're good. To yeah. Tell after the first, but that's but right. that is good to like. I I personally think you should go with like a snapshot of that world yeah um like a short story in that world almost like uh i don't know like instead of doing game of thrones do the hedge knight stories right you know? yeah that kind of thing yeah so i mean yeah i might tell the story of how the harpoon is forged or tell the story of you know what lodestone has to do with something or whatever i don't know but it'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting. I, it's gonna be, it's gonna be kind of like a, like a Hellboy pancakes style thing where it's like a just a, a brief look at something else, and there's kind of flash forwards and frame frame story. I think so. I like it. Yeah, I like it. I'm intimidated by the book because there's a lot of good people in it, so it'll be good. Yeah, um, including yours. I'm like now, now I gotta, I gotta do something really good. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, let's get into the topic. But before we get into the topic, I'm just going to say something really rude because it's a free country and I can <laughs> say whatever I want. And if I get like anybody mad at me for it, it's on them because I have like protection and freedom of speech. Okay, let me let me do the podcast intro. <laughs> we should leave that one in there. Uh, 48 Hour Art Check, Best of Podcast. We go live Monday, Wednesday, Friday on YouTube at 9 p.m. California time. We'd love it if you joined us in the chat. And uh, today's topic is the is is kind of a hot button issue, and I have not completely solidified my opinion on this. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be processing this out loud. Um, and and that's a good it's a good topic to do that on because we're talking about free speech. So here's I'm gonna I'm gonna tee this up, and then I'm I'm interested to get your thoughts. So here's the thing that I think. Right now, most people misunderstand what free speech is. Uh, at least they seem to misunderstand what free speech is because they think freedom of speech legally means freedom from consequences of your speech, which uh, is is only true in the case of you say things and the government is not allowed to murder or imprison you for saying those things. For example, there's a YouTuber right now in Thailand who is facing uh, prison charges because she commented on a dress on Miss America or the Miss Universe or something, and uh, it, the dress happened to be designed by a member of the royal family, and that is illegal. There's a guy in Scotland who's facing charges because of a dog and some stuff that he did that was really stupid, but like... You could be going to prison for that. And then, so in America, um, we, it, we one of the founding principles was that, was that there's freedom of speech, right? And there's the old phrase, like, I might not agree with you, but I'll fight to the death to protect your right to say what it is that, you know, whatever, I'm saying that wrong. Um, so here's the thing, though. There are laws, uh, both like tort law and written law, that are in place to regulate speech so for example the uh if i say something in the press um and it it meets a specific thing for liable libel or uh defamation then there are laws in place to protect that i can't just go and just lie about people in in journalism because it causes damage to people's characters yeah but then at the same time I can't be put in prison because I have a dissenting opinion from the ruling, the ruling class at the time, whether they be, uh, you know, donkeys or uh, elephants or whatever, you know, mascot happens to be running, you know, the White House or the House or the Senate or whatever. But here's my challenge. My challenge is this. My challenge is that 
all of those laws are really old and they kind of remind me of intellectual property right laws where we are trying to apply exceptionally old laws to a completely different situation because in the past 10 years, the game has completely changed. It used to be that mode of mass communication was gate kept and regulated. The FCC can come out and they can say, hey, you can't say that on television, um, you know, because we control, you know, the airways and there are certain rules and, you know, there's still freedom of speech where you're not going to go to prison, but you can't be, you know, there's some lines that you can't cross. And that was problematic and has been problematically applied, um, but it was also generally accepted to be good. And then um, things have changed and now there's, there's MySpace and Friendster and then Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and on and on and on and on. And now anyone has a voice that can carry and people are being radicalized into uh, significantly problematic groups that are, that, are, that, are, that are hate groups or whatever. And so the ability to spread hate and vitriol has increased and the laws have stayed the same. And to a certain extent, people should be allowed to say whatever they want without fear of imprisonment. But on the other hand, um, they, everybody has a bigger voice now. And so there's, there's these things, right? There's just all of these kind of externalities that are kind of fighting each other. And so I just wanted to talk about, I just wanted to talk about that for a minute because I'm kind of curious. Like Patreon right now is going through a thing where some guy said horrible things and was a total idiot. Uh, Patreon and Facebook and whomever else are, and YouTube are not government entities and they are not journalist, journalistic entities. And so they are privately held companies. And yet they are the main form of mass communication today, but without any regulation um, that serves the, the interest of the people. And so what Zuckerberg says is more important than what the voice of the people say or Congress. And it's kind of an interesting dynamic. So there's my... There's my five minute intro. Sorry. No, it's cool. I like it. Um, I, I have a couple thoughts on it and I'm, I'm in a similar boat where I'm not like 100% resolved on it. I know that on the spectrum of free speech, I tend to be on the very big side of like not regulating people's speech, like letting people say whatever they want um, in the public, uh, in public forums. Yeah. Um, I, I also like do think that businesses do well like businesses where their their mode is communication i think they do well and they i think part of why youtube thrived for so long was the fact that it was relatively unregulated except like trying to kind of moderate like you know online bullying and stuff like that um you know so their users don't get like chased off the internet um but, but outside of like hate speech law and stuff where it was a legal problem, um, they would kind of allow a lot. And I, and I feel like they've tightened up on that, um, which I think might actually slow the growth of it and kind of kill some of the great stuff about YouTube. Um, I, I, I'm, all, I'm all for like, you know, a business kind of making whatever decision they want though. Like when it comes to like a platform they host, like it's their dollar and um they can kind of pr present whatever they want um my concern with like over regulation on speech outside of like the the business world like that's to me like there's two sides of the coin like one i'm i'm very annoyed by people thinking that they can say whatever they want like in a workplace or like in a, a privately owned building um, because that's just not the case and that's not what free speech laws were ever de defined for um, they were they were they were they were kind of designed to um, prevent like like you getting incarcerated for saying the wrong thing and um, and actually a lot of them were really inspired by heresy law um, created by the, the Catholic Church and then after that very quickly adopted um, in England where there's very much not a separation of the Church of England and 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 the, the parliament so it's like if parliament had a problem with somebody you just excommunicate them for heresy and you can burn them alive <laughs> like right. it's you know so um 
I don't think we should head that direction. And I think the protections are really good. And as an indie cartoonist who likes underground stuff, um, and I really believe um, very firmly in, in you know, uh, in, in, in groups like the Comic Book Def Legal Defense Fund. Um, my sister's a librarian, and uh, she was told by uh, at an elementary school, and she was told by a parent, a couple parents, that she couldn't carry Bone by Jeff Smith in the library because uh, it had like there's a character that drinks booze in it. <laughs> and, and um it has some other like risque things and um and she she actually called up the comic book legal defense fund and got all these pamphlets and and the, they sent her a bunch of like here's equipment basically to mm -hmm. like defend it and keep it in the school and they kept it in the school um yeah. because because of her collaborating with that and caring about books and thinking that it's important that you don't let um, one parent kind of limit the uh, the education and what's available to people in education, and I, I think that's a good thing. Um, but but at the same time, I also think it, it's it's a smart thing to like be wise about what you're saying, where you're saying it, um, and also keep in mind that like if you step up in a public forum and you say stuff that pisses people off, like you could also get punched in the face. Like that's just that's that's part of um part of the risk of speaking out and like the the freedom of speech was never to protect you from ramifications of like running your mouth at like you know like i don't know you're standing next to a man and you insult his wife you know like right. it's it there's no there there's no protections for that however as an indie cartoonist um i i do i do think that people as artists should be able to say what they want whatever they want however they want um, do I think that a publisher should have to publish it? No. Um, so the, that I guess to me that's how I, I deal with that ambiguity. But it yeah. is weird with with online platforms. Um, it it's this really it's it's a tight it's a tough thing. It's a, it's a different. It's a, picking and choosing. It's a different thing um, because with publishing. Uh, you know, the product is the message, right? And so if a book publisher is like, you know, well, this guy is saying that we should kill all the Jews. And uh, obviously that's ridiculous and horrible. And so I'm not gonna give that guy a voice. That's terrible. Yeah. Um, because I don't want that to be my product. On the flip side, like when it's uh, a public forum like Facebook or whatever, we are the product. The product isn't the messaging. The product is the eyeballs, right? The fact that we are there, they take our data and they are selling. And I, I just went to a lecture about more stuff about what's going on with that. And it's crazy, but, but the product is not the message. And so it, it is almost like a town square situation, except multiplied. And so it is privately owned companies, but it is also the main mode of communication. And so we've privatized communication and we haven't updated the laws for externalities. And so, yeah. you know, like, and, and, and that, I could... that becomes problematic because if you think about like the, the primary source of communication before that, the telephone, like, you know, people would have been up in arms if like you're in the middle of a phone call and, um, you know, somebody was wiretapping you without a, without a warrant. Right. And, and suddenly goes, uh, oh, sorry, you can't you can't have service through this phone company because you were just using the F word or right. something, you know, right. on a phone conversation. Yeah. Like <clears throat> people would have sued the government for that kind of thing. However, that seems to be happening in mass yeah. on the Internet because there is no like system of laws to deal with it. Um, and, and on the and then the beauty of the Internet, it's weird because it's I, see, I can kind of see the conflict and i'm sure you're going to agree with me on this but the beauty part of the beauty of the internet is the fact that there's no system of laws that are heavily regulating it so right. it's this weird conundrum because you feel like to me i feel like if if they tighten too many laws on the internet um then you might end up in a similar situation as you did with phones where it's three companies that exist Mm -hmm. that offer pretty mediocre services 
and then keep getting these billion dollar bills that they easily pay because they're they you know they have they can just their, do whatever they their want hands yeah the the government's got their their hands deep in their pockets and 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 the, you know they all collaborate to like up the rates and slow down service and kind of like never and, and it'll slow innovation and stuff like that so it's it's such a tough one you know with and, and then if you look at if you look at the difference between pinterest and tumblr yeah there there's an argument against uh what i've been talking about and 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 for uh the private companies kind of doing whatever they want tumblr was intended for artists and creators and all this stuff and i don't know what the percentage is but it is mostly pornography right and fine i don't i don't care you know i i don't i don't choose to consume that myself but like it's out there um you know there are certain places that are trying to claim that it's uh that it's a public health issue you know and there's arguments for that or whatever but pinterest they came out very specifically from the from the inception said since this is a visually based site with an infinite scroll it could easily become something different than what we want it to become and so they curated who was allowed on their platform yeah and then beyond that heavily monitored um you know how, how that was and instagram has done a poor job of that but has tried to do that from the beginning as well and if but if you look at the difference between pinterest and 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 tumblr they are basically the same right it's a big infinite scroll of images um yeah. you know and there's there's some differences and people will argue with me about that but the main difference is the main difference is uh, you know one is very open and has become has kind of I, I just feel like if companies don't go out of their way to protect their to protect their mission statement um, then they will uh, the the laws of entropy uh, you know everything breaks down and degrades and rots and crumbles I mean everything is gonna gonna break down I, they're, they're, without a positive push towards good. Um, then, then things break down. That's just a natural law of the universe. But the problem becomes uh, the definition of good, because some yeah, people some people and, are like pornography just, is fine. It's not that big of a deal as long as nobody gets hurt. And other people are like, no, it's really bad. It's ruining everybody's, everybody's whatever. And some people are like, yeah, good means conservative, or good means liberal, or good means libertarian, or good means well, you know anti whatever. Not just the definition of good, but like the, like in the case of um like tumblr for instance like what's the definition of pornography so are we going to say all nude images because i've had the alternate experience with friends who are artists who will post like a nude painting right that's like not pornographic at all right it's a study and they've gotten it taken down from facebook which is like you can't show that and it's like but like right what so you can show that in like a church in the 16th century but you can't put it on facebook like that doesn't make any sense yeah and but there's and there's again, and there's a massive difference between erotic and pornographic and nude and naked i mean there's yeah there's a huge scale there and so just because there's there's nudity does not make it obscene yeah but, but what's the line like that's the problem with the, the, the problem and we've always had this problem as artists is like what's 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 the what's the line of obscene you know and like um as a guy who like loves like raw and and zap and like the, these underground comics that by by all means a lot of it was really obscene right um but at the same time i'd hate a world where that didn't have a forum um it, it but at the same time I don't think our crumb was ever saying like I should be able to do these really pervy, creepy comics for Marvel, <laughs> you know, like, right. I don't think that was ever a claim or even an ambition of that artist. Yeah. So it is weird when you have these platforms that have the reach of like a Marvel comics, but they don't have the um, regulation of that. Um, it, it is interesting. I don't know. It's, I don't know where I stand on it. Um, I, I don't either because I would I would argue that in certain countries, uh, Facebook is the internet. Um, yeah. I, I've had I've had colleagues that have traveled to islands and 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 third world countries and things, and everybody's got a smartphone, and everybody has uh, access to these public internet boxes, which are literally put there by Facebook, um, and funded by Facebook, and it's a public internet portal. 
and Facebook is the internet. You, yeah. you go to Facebook for the internet and you communicate with people via Facebook. There's no browser, there's no anything else. And so when you have a private company that is controlling 100% flow of information uh, to specific countries, what then, right? That's not, that's not even a, a national issue, that's an international issue. And, uh, and what if, hypothetically speaking, somebody comes in and figures out a way to game the algorithm and can literally move the populace of the world to vote a specific way? Because yeah. we have so much information on people now that we can do that. Like, it's such a complex issue that I just don't feel like the old laws are applicable anymore. Um, yeah. They're keeping it from, they're keeping me from going to prison because I say Trump is bad or Obama is bad or whatever. But it doesn't necessarily protect uh, an angry 17 year old man from uh, being radicalized into a terrorist group or a white supremacy terrorist group or a, you know whatever else I mean some sort of some sort of violent yeah. you know organization that is manipulating you know somebody in, in that in that transition point in their life like technically those people are their brains aren't even fully developed until they're 24 yeah. and so, there should be some kind of protection, but I don't know if that's government. I don't know if it's community. I don't know if it's private people coming yeah, or private and, companies and, coming together. And, and Cause I don't, that becomes this, this thing of um, like, okay. So, um, you know, like, like there's a, a good argument to be said that by trying to kind of, um, I would I would think just with human nature the way I see it is like if you take a book like Mein Kampf which is a terribly written book that was extremely influential by one of the worst human beings on the planet but it's still in print and a lot of people think it's important to read even if you disagree with it because it gives you a window into how that horror happened right um and like the thinking of that now, should that book go out of print because some guy reads it and gets inspired by it and then recycles some of the bad ideas within it? Or should that person who's like, like the, the point being like, if, if you say like, you can't read this book, is that going to do a lot of good? Or is that actually going to encourage people to like make that book more and more important than it actually is? Right. Whereas like if my son ever wanted to read that book, I'd explain the book him yeah i'd be like this is the guy who wrote it these are a million books by better authors who had better ideas you can, but it's a you but can this you is, can read that is, but you also need to read night by eli weisel yeah exactly right and 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 so by pairing it and by actually demystifying it and not banning it i think you actually do more of a service to the cause against it and, and, um, I, and I would agree with that on Mein Kampf because Mein Kampf is a horribly written book. Here's my, here's my concern. There have been studies done that anger is the fastest spreading emotion on social media. And so yeah. uh, the, 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 the nature of empathy and kindness, which I think personally, I think those two things are the, the solution to the world's problems, right? If you can yeah. empathize with another human being then they become human to you, they become like you, um, and you can see the world through their eyes, and then that, yeah. that de-escalates major issues, right? But if uh, that, that is a longer conversation, it's very nuanced, and it takes a more active participation on both the, the giver and the receiver of that information. Whereas yeah, it, it hate... It actually creates less of a hit in your head like you you get right. more chemicals from the hate um, because because of the biological imperative of rage and anger it usually yeah. means you know that there is danger or there is conquest you know and 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 those were survival mechanisms back when humanity was not a given you know um yeah. but now that now that we are in an age where I don't even know how to fight. It's not like required for me to be able to hunt or defend yeah. my home 
or my village. You know, I don't know how to like move in a phalanx formation with my neighbors. Like, you know, like it's, that's not how a society is anymore. And yet those biological imperatives still reward aggressive emotion uh, yeah. over empathetic emotion. And, and there's studies on that, that that talk about the addictive qualities of it too. So it's like, it's actually an addiction. So it's like, it kind of feeds itself. Like, so if you start giving into like rage and anger and hate, it, it actually starts creating like pathways in your mind that are going to make it easier each time you're confronted with something right. to get angry or respond in that way. So by that nature, it's like, you're right. There's all these uh it, it's like it's like sending a kid into a candy store with with like a banana yeah <laughs> banana is pretty good for them but what's the likelihood they're going to pick the banana when they're surrounded by all this candy that's going to give them that sugar rush here's and that instant here's fulfillment here's fifty dollars that you can spend on whatever you want but i want you to remember that bananas are good for you go <laughs> into the candy store and i'll see you in an hour right yeah and so as an adult with a fully developed brain and decades of experience going down different paths uh, and not having been radicalized in my youth, yeah. I can go into a candy store and responsibly navigate that situation, right? Yeah. But I, as a six-year-old, I couldn't. As a 13-year-old, I couldn't. And so yeah. that's, that's my challenge. I don't have an answer. But I'm just I'm just watching this Patreon thing. I'm watching these YouTube things. I'm watching these yeah. Facebook things. I'm watching what's happened, frankly, right now in the comic book industry and in the movie industry. And it's always these angry small minority of people that are saying some stuff that is absolutely and patently ridiculous, and mixing that with uh, with some stuff that makes sense, you know. I mean, we've got people out there that are like, you should tell good stories. And I'm like, yeah, I love good stories. Good idea. And they're like, and black people shouldn't be in them. And I'm like, whoa, hold on, you weirdo. What the crap is wrong with you, right? But because it's got some truth in it, they kind of mix that truth in with these weird, horrible, hateful lies. Yeah. And some people don't have the experience to be able to navigate that situation. So I don't know yeah. what you do with that. I think, uh, you know what I think it is, um, <clears throat> this is my own thing, but I think people need to start curating more, like, a as individuals. I think, uh, you know, especially as parents, it's like, you know, um, you got to know what's on the internet. And so, like, letting your kid just kind of freely surf the internet with a couple parental controls on there is not going to prevent them from coming across some creepy crazy stuff because the internet is a wild west scenario yeah. so like you know to me it's actually it's, it's not all that different from like you know the settlers you know like would you let like you know let's say you're you're on the oregon trail are you gonna just let your kid wander off into like an area where there's like snakes and all these dangers or are you gonna keep close by with some protection for your kid while you're traveling through a relatively dangerous territory you know yeah um it's it, you know i i think i think curation is important for for individuals like i think not i and i don't know how you grow that i don't know if you can i like i like how you are legislated i like how in in the same five minutes you've said i would let my son read mein kampf and creation curation is important for parents i love because it's both of those well, things now I, I, but, but my point is like if he's like 17 or 16 and he's reading a lot of books and he's curious about history like i'm not going to prevent him i'm right i i tend to think that um you you give more power to things by mystifying right and i'm not and, i'm not i'm not saying that you've said anything wrong i'm just yeah, pointing yeah. that out by way of saying this is an exceptionally complex and nuanced oh, situation that that is very difficult to navigate and is is completely new to the history of the world and the human race like yeah. at no point in time since the dawn of man has there ever been this issue come up it's really in the last i'd yeah. say since like 2006 well so that's the problem is like we have 
like almost all information at our at our fingertips and within a search you can access it and with a really good search you can probably get whatever it is for free it's it's crazy um so i think the dangers with that is like what what's happening now where people are unable to kind of curate between what's true and what's false um so like you know the idea of being able to even tell what a proper news source is is becoming a, a huge problem yep um that's having some massive ramifications that i think are going to require like a reset of how we're um viewing news or like a rebirth of curation in some way where you have like more reliable sources that are trustworthy that prove themselves trustworthy and in this environment it's really hard to tell what that source is because and who that curator would be um because you have a business you have another cnn journalist who is making up sources that was this week it's another yeah. one who's just like, yeah, I know I've won a bunch of journalistic awards and stuff, but I invented most of those sources. <laughs> they don't exist. And, 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 here's, and here's the issue with that is it is so difficult to trust the news. And most there was, a, there was another study done recently. Most people feel like uh, news organizations are massively biased and at the same time feel like extremely biased niche sites that have a very declared message of their bias are yeah. unbiased. And so it's like the, the idea of confirmation bias, which I feel this way, and anything that agrees with that is unbiased and truthful and straightforward. And it's like, well, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. And we have gone way longer than 15 minutes. <laughs> But, uh, but I don't know what the point of this is or how it relates to me on the day-to-day -day basis, but I do, I do, I do want to kind of wrap this up and then I'll, I'll give you the last word with, with this. I think it is exceptionally important for, especially for artists, and by artists I'm being liberal with that term to include anybody that's making things, creation, creators, um, to authentically speak your truth. And I know that sounds really kind of like a, like a, I don't know, really a trite cliche thing to say, but like, if you can tap into what makes you an individual and explore that out loud with the intention of connecting to other people through what it is that you're creating, whether that be making them feel horror making them feel funny, making them feel whatever, some sort of human connection. I think that is more important today than anything else because as, as Josh has said in a past episode, and I've been thinking about this a lot, very few people uh, will come across a fact and have that fact change their life. But most people will go through something and come across a song or a painting or a book or a, a political cartoon or something, and it just hits them at just the right moment to where it drastically changes and alters the course, whether they were gonna commit suicide and then didn't, or whether they were thinking something horrible. And this has happened to me. I remember thinking horrible things about a certain class of person. Um, and then I came across a comic that depicted an idea and I thought, I've been thinking wrong, right? And it was the art that was able to transform my thinking and help me progress in the way that I was thinking to where yeah. I understood humanity better, not because somebody spouted facts at me, but because I experienced something on a human level. Somehow that is really important in, in, in all of this. Yeah. And I think um, it, it, it's weird because I think as an artist, I think you want to be conscious of what you're communicating but I, but I think that um, watering down what you're communicating, if, if, if you want to use the F word, you should use the F word. If you want to like, if you want nudes in your story, you should have nudes in your story. If it's essential for the story, if it's what you want to communicate, I think, I think you got to let the filtering happen through other people. But I, but I do feel like I feel like we're in this mix of, of people who are 
kind of shock jocks in a weird way like even artists who are being kind of shock jocks just to get more like youtube subscribers or whatever i definitely say that in the comics criticism territory i think there's a lot of people who are just throwing out like things that are intentionally inflammatory just right. to get hits on on their videos and um and and that to me i don't think is is it's not very authentic it's pretty transparent and i and i think it might actually bite those people in in the end because it's a very very short-term gain yeah um what, what i'm talking about is, is isn't being unfiltered in that way i mean unfiltered in the way of um being a little fearless and i i think that um we're in a weird area where those like that type of creator is pretty fearless, but it's fearless because they know there's money at the end of the rainbow there, you know? Um, but I'm talking about more just like fearlessness that I'm not seeing as much on the internet. I do see another side where people are too regulated uh, and too scared to kind of communicate um, art that to them is authentic. And, and I, I, I just, I can't help but think like what the world would look like if um like a, a really good example would be like um the hunger games which is a book that came out you know quite a few years back but um but when that came out it was really shocking and threw people for a loop and i guess none of those people had read lord of the flies but <laughs> but but the point being it was a weird book because it was geared towards you know middle school students but it dealt with like death and had violence and you know it, you it's a heavy pitting pitting children thing. against each other to the death yeah but at the same time i'd hate to live in a world where that person never writes that book because it's not going to hit the ya market and i the point being like if you kind of create art and fear you don't end up with stuff like that i'm not saying it has to be the hunger games i'm just saying like um i don't want to see a world that ends up uh, intentionally just pissing people off and, and without thought um, putting out stuff that's inflammatory just because it's getting attention. Mm -hmm. I don't want to live in that world, but I also don't want to live in a world where, you know, every everything's been put through like the market research and, you know, approved by all the heads of, you know, the, the, you know the policing system where they're going to kind of make sure everything you say isn't going to offend anyone because that's a world with no sharp edges and um some of the most fun things in the world have sharp edges you know it's yeah. you know some of the most pleasant and, and beautiful vistas in the world are you know like the grand canyon it it's it's not a safe <clears throat> place <laughs> I'm, but I'm, it's one I'm, of the most beautiful places on earth i'm getting but it's by no means safe I'm getting um, my daughter. If they bubble wrap it, it's not going to be as pretty. Yeah. You know? I'm getting my nine year old daughter a lathe and a rotary Dremel for Christmas. Wow. And I have had a lot of people uh, really not happy with me for that. But she likes working in wood. So. No, I'm, I mean, I, <laughs> I think as long as it's supervised and like yeah. you, you know, like you got to kind of. I, yeah. I, so I, my, my point is I, tying in with that. It's like, I think we're in a world where it, it's like, we're kind of forgetting what human beings are capable of. Um, I think I, I remember, I remember this, uh, there's anyhow, there, there's a lot of great interviews with Sendak where he talks about children. And one of them, he was talking about how, um, parents who criticize his children's books had, had kind of become so, like lost in like nostalgia that they forget like what little turds kids are <laughs> and, <laughs> and he was basically saying like he, he you know he he likes writing for kids he, it's just the adults that suck right um because they wanted him to you know like not have like monsters like and and you know if you think of like where the wild things are that's such a great book i i don't see a lot of kids books to that level anymore and i think because of the whole everything getting soft edges but if you look at that book i mean those monsters are literally telling that kid like not metaphorically they're going to eat him mm -hmm. like they love him so much they're going to eat him yeah that's what they're telling him and 
uh, that's horrifying. <laughs> it's, right. The whole thing's kind of horrifying, but it's such a great piece of art. And so that's my point is like when, when you're approaching, uh, trying to tie it into art, I would just say when you're approaching speech in art, don't regulate yourself. Let, let people who read it, you know, do the getting offended or whatever from it. But at the same time, don't just be offensive to be offensive. Have an intention, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you're going to be offensive, like, know what you're doing so that you're coming out there like, you know, um, Iggy Pop, you know, on, on front front and center. You're like, I am being offensive. <laughs> like, that's that's the, the, the I, I guess that's what I'm getting at. And I and I would I would semi counter that with um if your message is more important than the offense, I would not necessarily, you know, don't, don't cut core things, but if there's something that is going to turn somebody off that otherwise would have gotten something significant out of your work and that thing isn't necessary, uh, you know, maybe, maybe consider your audience and your message um, yeah. over, you know, over what it is. And I, I don't know. I mean, you know, for example, like the X-Men, you know, were a, a significantly influential part of a lot of people's lives. And the message was basically like society and the government should not single out classes of people who are different than the majority of the people and regulate and legislate and fear, fear monger and, you know, whatever. Right. And whether that be uh, Jews or racial minorities or religions or uh, sexual preferences or whatever, the, the meaning has kind of changed throughout the years. Um, had they also included shocking gore and nudity and, and swearing, uh, it might not have had the impact that it had uh, based on the fact that it would turn people off before they got the message. So there's kind of a balance. 100%. Yeah. There's kind of a balance. And uh and 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 the nice thing about it is that there is a range and an entire spectrum and everyone will disagree on where the line is and that's okay because what is for someone is not for somebody else and there's no creator out there that is going to create anything that is right for everybody. Um, yeah, and, and that's why I think it, it does all tie back to authenticity because there's, um, uh, oh my gosh, there's a joke I heard. It was actually by one of the writers on Game of Thrones where they were calling the exposition in the show as sex position because it's just, they, they just basically throw in a bunch of naked people whenever they have to have an expositional scene and um, so that it'll keep viewers engaged. <laughs> yeah and um to me i actually think that that like i like game of thrones a lot but i think that's actually a negative um because it, it it's like there's some stuff where it's necessary within that series but there's so many unnecessary moments like that where it's just filling space and just giving eye candy or whatever during an expositional scene just to kind of wax over like a lot of filler they have to have in there. And I, and I think, me, I think Game of seems... Thrones is a perfect example of what I was just talking about because yeah. I haven't watched it. And I, uh, for that reason, I'm not interested in, in that type of material, which is fine. Yeah. I'm not making a judgment call on it or whatever, but for, for me, I don't want to, I don't want to expose myself to that. And, uh, and I probably would be a huge fan. I read the first three books and really enjoyed them. And, yeah. uh, I'd probably be a big fan of the show, but because I heard, you know, that it's so overtly gratuitous, I was like, ah, I could, I could skip it. Yeah. And like, like what I'm, what I'm getting at and like, that's their call. But my, my point is like, I, you know, when you're creating something, don't just throw naked people in it. Cause it's going to get you more, you know, money or more, you know, cause the, once again, that's inauthentic. If it's absolutely necessary for the story, then yeah, throw it in. But it's like, it, it, I think the intention should be authentic. Like to me, that's kind of the big difference, like between the shock jock or the, uh, the Instagram model who's like, Oh, look at me, you know, or a person who's like sincere. So I, I guess that's, 
that's kind of my um my take on it but i don't know man now, now all of the watched. instagram models that watch this show are mad at you so i know it's a i know good job um so abe and jeff in the chats uh we're, we're talking merry christmas and i just realized we this is our last episode for christmas so i um i know we're talking like free speech and weird kind of I, I don't <laughs> think either of us really know where we fall on it which is why we're kind of it, it's sort of molding all over the place because it, it is it i is think a weird topic. i think each of us knows where we fall individually and each of us has no idea what society, government, and local municipalities and communities should do about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we, so, we've nailed down what I'm going to create and what you're going to create, but that's about yeah. it. <laughs> so anyhow, yeah. free speech aside and all that, like, I hope you guys will have a Merry Christmas. I hope yeah. you guys have a really good holiday. I hope some of you guys are taking a day off. If you guys are freelance, because I know a lot of our, our community are like freelancers, you know, treat yourself to like a day off of, you know, the grind and, and enjoy family and stuff. This is going to be a fun break. Um, I will miss you, Corey, because we're probably not going to do this for a bit. Yeah. Um, maybe i don't know towards the end of next week or whatever i'll, I'll message you and we'll, we'll get back on the roll but i think we're gonna take a tiny break and that's good because like dude we're gonna open presents and be around family and uh i don't know to me like that kind of stuff is good to get that reinvigoration and stuff but uh, actually this is a pretty good topic because it's also a way to get the free speech out of your system before the family gathering so you don't <laughs> end up <laughs> you know yeah yeah um so so with that said thanks to everybody who's joined us in the chats um and uh and uh yeah go check out coreycur.com re-watch that animation watch the video on it too on animating the explosion because it's amazing um you can check out my stuff at quarterlystories.com or go to tapas.io and add quarterly stories to your library there i'm like super close to being at the point where i'll make advertising revenue on it so that helps a lot and then uh other than that just um we you know oh if you're listening to this on itunes uh give us a four star uh, review and uh other than that just have a really good christmas and we will see you guys uh, sometime probably late in the next week bye see you